I was almost going to quit. I said, I need a sign. God, you have to show me a sign. God, show me a sign. God, if you're real, show me a sign. I remember it like it was yesterday. And I said, John, we're going to make $1 million a month. And the guy rolled his eyes. During those years, what were you making? 30 grand a year. When did you finally like have a breakthrough? I've never talked about this, by the way. You know, I want to become something different now. It's transition time for Grant. He's got to grow. He's going to shed the old skin and become another version of myself. What's up, Wealth Builders? Today, I probably have the dude I would have to say is impacted my business career the most. And I'm not just saying that because he's here. I've only said it <laughs> on this episode. Um, this dude is a real estate mogul, a business mogul, a social media mogul, and is somebody who causes a lot of controversy. And he's back again for another episode. I got Grant Cardone. Dude, appreciate you, man. Yeah. I'm glad I've had a, 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 a some positive impact on your life. Yeah. It's good to hear those words come out of your mouth and, and, uh, it was great being on the show last time. I look forward to being here with you today. Yes. I, when, when we got to town, I told Jared, I said, dude, we got to go see Ryan, man. No, I appreciate it. I got the DM yesterday. And I was like, yeah. oh, dude, yeah, let's go. Yeah. So I appreciate that. Yeah, you got it. Well, you know, the reason I bring it up just at, right at the beginning, so people know the tone of the interview, because there's a lot of people now that I've, I haven't even been in the game nearly as long as you, but I've, I've gotten to be around all these different guys you see on social media in the business space. And one thing I have noticed is that there's many of them who it's like, I don't know, they, they just they just come at you like, hey, why don't you do something for us and then we'll do something for you. Uh -huh. But I have never experienced that with you. Everything you've ever done have been like, hey, you guys come to my office. We're going to give you guys a ton of value, all this stuff. And, you know, we just do it. And then it's like, hey, if you want to do something together, let's do it. Like you're always like giving first and uh -huh. people don't know that. Yeah. And so I just like, I, I want people to know that because it's yeah. really important. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, <laughs> whatever, man. I think people see me, you know, I talk about the bag and the, you know, how to get it. And people don't see what I'm doing. You know, maybe we don't do a good job of telling people how we help. And I'm transparent about, look, you need to get money. You need to go get yours. You need to take care of your family. Like it's not, it's an unpopular topic. Yeah. Um, I guess. And nobody talks about it like that. Yeah. Well, I and, think and then when people hear it, I think they're like, no, that's not, I can't be associated with that Yeah. or whatever, you know, but uh, there's enough people that actually resonate with the message. Well, I'm just talking even from, okay, like you're, you're going out to your followers and you're trying to help them out and you know, from either being broke to multiplying the money or whatever. And like, that's one thing. It's, it's clear to see the value you're putting out and all the different ways you can help them if they go to events and all that stuff. But I'm talking from behind the scenes that no one would see yeah. and how you interact with other guys in the space. Yeah, like we, we did three interviews this morning. I didn't know any of these three people. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just like, well, if, my, if me being on their show can help them and maybe help their viewership, we didn't sell anything. We didn't promote anything. There's no links embedded. Yeah. Um, cool. Mm -hmm. Like it'll help me at some point. Yep. Somebody in there, some small percentage is going to resonate with my message. Yep. Uh, as long as I don't have to like become someone else to make yeah. everybody happy. Um, to fit an audience. You're yeah. Just, you're I'm just cool. Be, you know, I'm not trying to be most popular. Yeah. So we've talked a lot about just different things on these podcasts and behind the scenes and, we were talking just now about our wives, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Essentially, what we we're talking about is like what it's like filming with mm -hmm. our wives. Yeah, yeah. And my wife, uh, she sent me a clip of Elena because she started following Elena. Uh -huh. It and was me and her doing the show or you, just Elena? Yeah, no, it was you and Elena doing the show. Yeah. And she was like, I was dying because Grant did the same thing you do yeah. when we do an interview. He just started talking, telling this story, and I could just see Elena's eyes just like rolling and just yeah, yeah, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. How do you do it? Dude, man, we, 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 we quit doing the show. Like I'm just telling everybody, like I, my wife and I haven't even talked about this publicly, but like it was just too hard doing the show together. Yeah. And one, we didn't plan it. We yep. didn't produce it. We didn't lay it out. So it was like Wednesday morning, she'd come to me and be like, what are we doing the show about today? I'm like, man, look, I, 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 <laughs> you plan it. Like, I'm just supposed to show up and be Grant. <laughs> Let me just be Ricky Ricardo. Yeah. Yep. I'm home. Yeah. You know, let me be that guy and you do the rest of the work. Like, but tell me what you want, because if you don't tell me what you want to do in the show or what the show is going to be about, then I have to do all the planning about the show and what, the, and you know, 
And then I'm going to go back to the stuff that I'm strong at. Mm -hmm. So, so we said, okay, we tried it, dude. Mm -hmm. We did it for probably 18 months. Every show became an argument. (laughs) After or during? Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> no, no, before, during, and after. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, and then that's it true. Was like, up. And then we try again, you know, and then we'd like, we, then we start thinking, oh, there's something wrong with us, or, you know, why can't we get along with this one moment? And it was just hard. Like, it was, you know, like, just because you love somebody and you're with somebody doesn't mean you have to work together, like, yeah. on that kind of project. And it didn't really mean anything. It, it was probably just because there was no planning. There was no production. Yeah. And so we we said this year, we're going to bring it back because people love the show. They actually like to see the dynamic and we take phone calls and that was cool. That would actually made it easier. Yeah. You know, but I'm known for putting everybody on the spot. Like mm-hmm. I like, you know, playing mm-hmm. with people. And then sometimes people get their feelings hurt. I do it with Ryan. I do it with Jared. I do it with Sabrina. I do it with everybody. Mm-hmm. And I pick on people. Yep. You know, but it's not. It's all love. It is. But, you know, sometimes I guess it doesn't feel good publicly. Yeah. Yeah. They're not used to public, you know, yeah. getting, getting like, ragged God on. God dang it. Why'd you have to call me out on that? We're, right? we're used to it. Yeah. And that's where I think. Like, um, like one day I did yeah. like, oh, but I was good this morning, you know? Mm-hmm. And she's like, oh my God, don't do that. Right. <laughs> like, oh, I didn't know that was out of bounds. Right. I thought we were doing a fun show. Yeah. And so, um, so anyway, we, this year I said, let's bring it back. People love it. Literally the first Wednesday of January, Mm. we were going to go do the show and she's like, okay, what are we talking about today? (laughs) It's the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, let's not do this. (laughs) Not even once a month. (laughs) So we bailed on it. That's funny. Yeah. So (laughs) I experienced the same thing with, uh, Mindy, my wife, because, you know, we're doing interviews and I'm used to getting like, you know, just open and yeah. on, I don't even want to say honest, but just like putting stuff out there. Yeah. Right. And it's different. Right. Because she's not used to it the way we are, where I'm used mm. to getting hated on and all this crap. I don't care. Just, just, it doesn't matter to me one bit. Yeah. But, and I'm also used to freestyling and this is what you're saying. Like yeah. most people need to plan, prepare everything like, you know, lined up for what we're going to talk about so they can mentally prepare. And I guess it's just a rare skill to be able to just go off the cuff and roll. Yeah. It's just got to be developed. I think anybody can do it, you know, as long as you don't have a bunch of skeletons. You, if you, <laughs> even if you have the skeletons, if you, if you're, if you have no problem with dealing with it, like I don't, there's nothing, you know, nothing a person can say to me that is going to be like bothersome to me enough. Cause yeah. I've, I've already, it's an awareness. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I know that. You know, You've already owned it. I've, I've owned it already. I've probably already stated it publicly. Yeah, yeah. What's the big deal? Like, I'm in this big thing right now that's going on. Yeah. You know this big thing? Which one? You got a lot of things. <laughs> well. The one with the T-Mobile guy? Yeah. Okay. That thing, okay. Well, I don't have anything to hide. Yeah. Okay, like, I, I have nothing. Like, I'm already, I am one of people. Like, I am, I'm always pulling for the underdog and the little guy. So, me hanging out at one o'clock in the morning on clubhouse is different than um, a guy that's uh, super connected and wants to be and needs to be connected to wall street royalty Mm. and blue bloods. Yeah. It don't look bad on me, bro. (laughs) Like I'm, I'm, that's where I roll. I'm, I'm a street guy. Yeah. So, I came from nothing. I, I didn't, I didn't go get a corporate job, big salary. I don't take a knee, kiss the ring of the, <laughs> of, of, of the, of the Ivory league, the Ivy league educated. Mm-hmm. Like it's not who I am. So I don't have anything to hide there. Like, and, um, if you do, if you do, then that, that, that's, that's a problem. Then right? you should hide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or you shouldn't be there. Right. And, um, so what's the deal with like why you're going, cause you just sued him for like a hundred million dollars or something. Yeah. Well, I can't talk about the suit exactly yeah, for do you, obvious Do you reason. think you're going to actually, can I ask this? Do you think one, you're actually going to like win or it's going to one ch- Okay. hundred percent. Okay. Bro, when you see, you, when have you seen me say I was going to do something and, and wasn't playing for real? Okay. Not you, f- find me one event. Right. Are you going to say you're going to go after YouTubers and stuff too? Yeah. 
you're going like, is it to come? Like, what's the deal? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's gone too far. People, people are taking their, uh, free speech and abusing free speech. Right. Um, and hiding under, it's my opinion and I have free speech and he's a public figure. Yeah. Yeah. Like actually this, the, 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 the thing is flipped now. You've had three or four major defamation, uh, def defamation suits that were won that shocked people. You did? No, no. In oh, public. In yeah. Where, where you're like, yeah, he is a public figure. Yeah. You can have your opinion, but you cannot. I can't say that Ryan Panetta is a fraud or a con artist or a bullshitter and not have proof to back it up. Right. Nor should you be able to have it in clickbait titles mm. yeah. without providing proof. So the one thing I'm going to do is I'm trying, I'm going to try to actually have the law changed. Oh, so that, so that, yeah, you can do, you can say whatever you want, understand there's consequences, but you can't damage somebody's reputation hiding under my opinion or it was said, or they said without providing the facts in that article or in that clickbait title or in that video that you did. Yeah. Anybody can create a damaging narrative with One, nothing that you can't take down. Right. So like this particular suit, it says publicly, this is a public record that the damages are no less than 100 million. Okay. I have to be able to quantify that and prove that yeah. we know, we know for sure we can many, many times over that. Right. So yeah, I'm dead serious about it <laughs> too. I think I win it. Yeah. Hands down. Have every It's going to take years. You think? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, sure. Sure. And you know, and, and three it's it's going to send a message to everybody that has been playing this game, abusing this game. Yeah. Um, and hopefully I'll, I'll change, I'll have something to do with change of the law. So people cannot have this damaging clickbait narrative in order to get views and monetization. Yeah. They get a few ad pennies mm -hmm. from Google. And while I'm being damaged. Yeah. And I can't get it off the internet. Yeah. You know, and, and none of it's true, by the way. So here's the big problem. I can prove none of it's true. Mm. Okay. And it will benefit me to go public because in any defamation or any kind of case, right, there's going to be discovery on both sides, mm -hmm. which is painful. Yeah. Particularly if you have skeletons. Right. But I know what our company does, but I would love for it to be public disclosed. So you like, want your stuff to be out there. Dude, I want, because I'm privately held company. Like I want it proved. And do you know what he's network. got behind the scenes that people don't know? Well, I can't talk about that yeah. part, but, but I can talk about my part. I know right. what I know. I know I want it to be publicly disclosed what Cardone training technology makes and how it makes its money, what Cardone Ventures makes, 10X Health Systems, our other ventures, 189 licensees around the world. Were they impacted? Mm. Were these other companies impacted? How much did it impact Cardone Capital? Yeah. When we're raising, uh, you know, uh, $1.2 billion, how many, how many of the 13,000 investors were negatively impacted? Yeah. Yeah. Because they're like, eh, I was going to do it, but now I'm not. Yeah. Okay. Because it's way some more guys, than hundred million. It's way more. Oh my God. Yeah. You know, and then what, what happens to the brand? Mm -hmm. And then I said to this guy, I said, bro, you better hope nobody else picks up what you said and then starts to distribute it on the internet. Cause they're going to get caught in it too. They're going to get caught in it too. But then now, now it makes it now, worse from what he said. They're multiplying the damage. Yeah. And you know, they're like, you cannot be at that, you cannot have that experience in branding, sales, marketing, and not know the damage created. Yeah, he's not just a YouTuber. This guy's a CEO, was a CEO of a, you know, massive company. So he ain't no dummy. That's for sure. No, you can't hide under. You can't hide, you can't say negligence. You can't hire under, you know, I, I, I didn't know what I was doing. Wealth Builders, if you're finally ready to get off the fence and start investing in real estate or scale your business, now is the time. Interest rates are projected to drop multiple times this year, which means prices are gonna go up and it is a great time to flip houses, to wholesale, and to start buying again. So if you're trying to get that first deal or you're trying to scale to the next level, we wanna help you out. Make sure you go to wealthyinvestor.com. You can book a free call with our team today to see which program can help you get to the next level. We can partner with you and help you get that first deal. We'll even close the deal for you or we can teach you how to build your business, how to build a company, how to start hiring people. It does not matter which stage of the game you're at, we wanna help you out. So go to wealthyinvestor.com 
and see us today. Why do people get like that, dude? Is it just dude, jealousy I, and envy to, to act so irrationally? You know, because and, and here's the other. Did you thing hear too. some of it? I remember you. Um, we hopped on a spaces before and he yeah. hopped on with us. I remember uh -huh. that. Uh huh. And that was, you know, what would you hear? I haven't paid a t too much attention. To yeah, it, I mean, what'd I, you hear it, on that spaces though? Oh, I mean, it's just a guy who's, uh, to me, it just a lot of jealousy, right? Like mm -hmm. a lot of just talk for no, but even if, here's my thing, okay? Even if it were true, what's the point from this guy's perspective to just constantly be like going after somebody like all the time as a guy who's, like he's not a YouTuber, right? YouTubers got nothing else to do other than make the news and make clickbait to yeah, monetize. This yeah. guy has other things. Maybe he doesn't. But maybe he doesn't. <laughs> maybe he doesn't. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. Like I mean, the thing I learned learned from this is the importance of work. Staying relevant requires you to stay at work. Mm. You know, you can't just give money to charity, retire, and just here's some money, here's some money, and, and feel and be relevant. You know, and and once you're relevant in society. You need to keep being relevant. Yeah. Otherwise, you're gonna have you're gonna have a big pit in your stomach. You're gonna have a big hole to fill up. It's hard to experience and the top and then to be relevant. It. To be relevant every day. To be talking about business and economics and making a contribution and and running a company and 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 making decisions every day. To going to that to mysteriously having nothing to do. Except and not a boatload of money. Huh? Except just a boatload of money. Big deal. Now yeah. you're going to blow through the money to, to try to fill up the hole. You're going to use drugs. You're going to use alcohol. You're going to use dating. Like you're going to try to fill it up with all this other stuff that never fills up anybody's hole. Right. No, nobody ever is filled up. And then you're going to start, again, I just imagine you start deteriorating from the inside and start getting, you know, seeing other people do stuff. I know when I see people doing more than me, dude, it bothers me. Mm -hmm. You're competitive. Like, I'm like, God dang, they're doing something. Why am I not doing more? Like there's this, 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 this discomfort inside. This like, you need to do more grant. Yeah. And if you're not doing more, it's going to get painful over and over and over and over again. How do you balance the fire of being competitive and wanting to be the best? But, you know, because a lot of people, they play the comparison game. In this case, let's say, yeah, uh, this guy, this T-Mobile guy is, What's his name? John, John, yeah, whatever. Yeah. So he's watching you, obviously, because you're relevant and it's fueling his fire for negativity and for comparison. And I'm sure it's not making him feel great. Whereas you're probably watching other people and yeah, you're feeling that fire. You're like, dude, I got to do more, but yeah. you're using it to motivate and go to the next level. Yeah. And like, for me, well, that's, that's how I feel. I, I like watch guys who I are crushing get, it and I'm like, let's go. I, I, I don't hate on them. Yeah. You don't hear me hating on anyone mm -hmm. i'm not hating on people i don't do that like you, people accuse me of whatever they want to accuse me of like i'm not hating on anybody doing more i'm actually inspired by it yeah like, it doesn't and it doesn't matter what it, whether it's the arts sports business technology it doesn't matter like i'm like god dang that's amazing man now i can feel a moment of like grant you're not doing enough it's not about them it's about me mm, yeah i'm like i feel some it, and I don't know if it's competitive. I think it's just a, a bit of a wake up call. Like for me to be a better me. Do you think you get complacent at times? Oh yeah. A hundred percent. dude. Yeah. I have to fight it every day. Like, mm. and you know, I mean, I'm in a position now where I could easily talk myself in like, yeah, I'm good. It gets harder and harder. It gets harder and harder to play the game. Yeah. You know, to stay in shape. You got to find new things to. You got to find new reasons. And, yeah. You know. So what right now, what is it? Um, man, I'm trying to make, I'm trying to make some plays in real estate right now, big time. So I was talking to your guys right before this and, you know, we're, we're going to try to add, uh, we're at four and a half. I'm trying to double that this year. If we mm. can get to nine. If I could get to 10 mm -hmm. billion before the end of the year, yeah, I'd be so proud of myself. Mm. I don't know if I can do it. That's a huge goal. But the opportunity's here. Yeah. I remember when we first talked, your goal was like 40 billion. Yeah. At one point. And yeah, to, it is. It's that, 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 that yeah. target's still out there. But if I could accomplish, um, if we could make this big move this year. Mm -hmm. What's your perception of what's the market going to be like this year, 2024? I keep, I keep waiting for, for it to fall apart, man. <laughs> but it hasn't. Shit. Yeah. It's crazy. I keep waiting for it, for everybody to say, okay, take it. But it's getting closer. Mm-hmm.
and people are tapping out. Do you think it's, you know, I know that 2023 was a tough year to raise money for most syndicators uh-huh. and, and just in general, right? Yeah. The capital markets, the banks, everybody was tight. Yeah. Um, do you like from what I've heard others and I've seen myself, a lot of those people who've been tight with their money are now coming off the sidelines saying like, all right, I was waiting just like what you said. I got to put my money to work. Yeah. Well, what we're seeing is we're seeing a lot of guys still tied up. Yeah. They can't, they can't play because they have, they have balance sheets to fix the, this bank warning that happened this week, Mm -hmm. the New York community bank, Mm-hmm. I've been saying now, I, I think the last time I was on here, there's going to be a hundred bank failures in this country. Mm. I think that there'll be a hundred bank failures, multiple pension funds, big, giant, massive pension funds that are going to get whacked. Mm. Unless the government's going to step in and say, just extend the maturity dates on everything. You have two point, somewhere between 2.2 and $2.7 trillion of office debt. You got another two and a half trillion dollars worth of multi, multifamily debt. 700 billion of it expires this year. Yeah. It's got to be fixed. Now, if the government steps in, if the, if the, if the problem is big enough, the government could step in and say, extend maturity dates, which they've been doing whenever there's close to a failure. I hope they don't do that. Yeah. Okay. Like, I hope they just say, no, no, it is what it is because that's what will pull. That's what will force urgency for a seller to sell at a, it's say a six cap. Right. But if the market would hit a real six, I would buy, I would, I would, I would sell every asset I have to buy at a six. Mm. You'd be trading. I would buy it because I'll be so below replacement costs Mm. on everything, at least the stuff that we're looking at. Yeah. And I think it would become, I think it becomes a generational one-time opportunity of of a lifetime Mm. and, and uh, to have cash flow producing, you know, the stuff I buy. Yeah. Uh, Dallas, we're looking at Dallas, anything in Florida, Tennessee, Arizona. Um, if I could get close to a six on institutional, I think, you know, we end up with we end up with four percent money, below four percent money in twelve months, and we'd have a swing of I mean, be massive. Yeah, it'd, it'd be, be massive. it'd be it'd be, I don't know, a couple billion dollar score. Yeah. So this is a, this is a question I've wondered. We just started raising money from IRAs. Um, mm-hmm. and you know, we've done it for a little bit and I, I always noticed that you, you do that a lot. Well, you promote it a lot. Yeah. How much would you say like that is a percentage of the fund that you guys raise? I think we're around, we're probably 20%, 25%. Okay. The money's already gone. Yeah, I know. That's right. why I so, like, I was like, this is the easiest money to raise. Cause, cause you're not raising it. money. You're just moving money. Yeah. Right. And so, and, and anybody out there with an IRA, IRA 401k or Roth and you, you know, your fidelity said you did 17% last year. You didn't do 17%. I, I bet you a hamburger. You didn't do 17. <laughs> just look at the first of the year, what it was. And then 2031 at the end of the year, what it was. Don't, don't, don't read all oh, the fund did blah. Look at your, you had, you started with 17,000 and you ended up with, $18,200. Like mm-hmm. look exactly what it, that's what you should measure, not what they report. Yeah. Because if you're not, if you weren't invested last year in seven stocks and you were just in the SP 500 without seven tech stocks, you lost money last year. Yeah. You lost money. Then add inflation, you lost another three or four points. Yeah. And you're negative. Right. So I would take that money take it out of your IRA, 401k, transfer it over, slide it into a real estate deal that's going to at least cash flow. And I think when we print more money again, and we will print more money, and we'll print more money and rates will go down. When that swing happens, okay, anything you invested in that was real, you will have an explosion on the cash flow and the appreciation. Mm. You can't spend it because it's going back to your IRA. But it'll be there. But it'll be there. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I noticed too, is that, I mean, you were around in 08 and you said you almost lost all of it back yeah. then. And this last, you know, I'll call it 12, 18 months was probably the toughest time since then, right? And I noticed that just like social media, people in general, like, I guess feelings and everything start to really come out when times are tough. Yeah. Like I've seen a lot more negativity, 
in just the world and like I don't know. It, uh-huh. It's weird. It's it's a new experience for me. Just, from who? From real estate people or real or estate just people, shit, just social general. media, just watching the uh-huh. amount of videos, hate things. Like yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you notice it or just you're just always used to it or what, but yeah. I don't know. I noticed it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of hateful people, bro. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people do nothing. A lot, lot, just a lot of envy and jealousy and tapped outness and and quitters. I mean, the quitters are haters. I've mm. never met a I've never met a hater that wasn't a quitter mm. ever in my entire life. The most successful people in the world that later hate on other people quit because when they were doing when they were winning the game they were not hating on other people. You just cannot quit and win at the same time. Yeah, and you can't. You're not going to hate while you're winning. Mm. So I've never had hate from above me. <laughs> yeah. Ever nobody's ever hated down on me. Right. You know, it's always come from side peers to a peer that yeah. maybe I'm moving away from. Mm-hmm. I've moved away my whole life. I've moved away from people. How do you deal with that? Right. You deal with a partnership breakup. You deal with um, yeah. employees leaving yeah. or you firing people. And, you know, there's always negative the way feelings. I deal with it is I do better than they do. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, if I if somebody leaves me and they leave and do better without me than with me, that should be an indication that I'm broken. You were the problem. I'm the problem. Yeah. But when you leave me and you do worse and I do better, I was not the problem. Mm. So you let your success tell the story. I'm just saying like when people leave our company, we have a thousand employees now. Yeah. When people leave the company and they go off and do better, I miss something. Mm. I had a talented guy that went off and proved he could do better without me. Right. Well, then that's on me. Mm -hmm. If he leaves the company, and my company does better without him, yeah. bro. It ain't me. Mm-hmm. It's you. Okay. So, I mean, we've lost some unbelievably talented people yeah. in our company. None of which ever did better when they left. Mm. Partners. You, 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 there's one guy right here in town. Like he, he hadn't done better. He's done worse. Yeah. So, like, I'm just saying, like. Economics, you know, the beautiful thing about business and economics, it just never lies. It just tells the truth. Right. You know, it's so I don't know why people hate like they do, bro, because it's a complete waste of energy. Yeah. How often would you say you're and, I, and let me just can I just say yeah. one other thing? Because I'm thinking about what I just said and I'm like, Grant, you hate. I'm thinking to myself, Grant, yeah. but you hate on people. I hate on BlackRock. I hate you you hear me talking about Because you're you're talking up. <laughs> I'm I'm definitely talking up. <laughs> I'm like, I hate these guys because I want to be them. Right. Like I admit I want to be those guys. Yeah. Like I'm hating them. I am envious of them. Yeah. I I I I want to build what they built. Okay. So, but you know, right now when I don't have a plan, I just hate. <laughs> Like, I, and I hate these guys, right? But, but truth, the truth is I want to be those guys. Mm-hmm. Like, I admire that they built a trillion dollar business. Right. Like, not without exaggeration, a trillion. Yeah. But you have the self-awareness to know. Yeah. Like, if I feel this way about these guys, yeah. I understand how other people feel about me. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. But, but I can't keep hating them. Right. Because yeah. if I can't, if I hate them, I can't become them. Mm. So I have to learn how, okay, how do I emulate what I like? What do I like about them? What have they done to help? Right. How would I scale that? How can I use pieces and parts of that and get off the hate thing? dude? Because yeah. the envy, the hate thing is, it's a destructive dark energy. Mm. It's not, it does not create solutions. I told someone that one time. I'm like, look, dude, if you build your content and your brand all around hating on other people, who do you think you're attracting to you? It's like you're going to have the worst monetizes. people ever, like ever. <laughs> Good luck doing anything with those people. Yeah, because they're going to turn on you. Yeah. They're, they're going to, they're going to, if they, if they, if they bought the hate and they're critters of hate. Yeah. Okay. The moment, <clears throat> and these haters on the YouTube, the, the, you know, I didn't go after those guys first because why would I give them energy first? Yeah. They like it. I, I'd be giving them attention. Yeah. Okay, I need to set a standard and then apply the standard everywhere. Yeah, because but what you said, the fans that watch their stuff, those critters of this disgusting hate and envy and jealousy, 
They never convert to anything, dude. Nothing. These people can't even hold on to a credit card. Well, they got to rely on Google. <laughs> Google yeah. to pay them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And the people that view them are even worse. Mm -hmm. there, there's no monetization there. Mm -hmm. Yep. So other than having Google AdSense, yep. you're never going to sell a product because these people who consume you sell hate, out, <laughs> who consume hate, well, yep. they're never going to trust you anyway because all they're watching is everything's a scam. So how are they going to convert? Yeah. Makes no sense. Yeah. We are launching our newest program over at Wealthy Business that is going to help change the game for businesses and help them scale with purpose. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we want to help you grow your business, but keep the main things, the main things in your life. The family, the faith, the health, and everything that's important, we don't want to sacrifice that while we help you scale your business. And so we're going to give you the same tools that I use to continue to grow my businesses to new levels, but still having the time and financial freedom to do the things that are important to me. We're gonna teach you how we do marketing at a high level and generate leads for such low amounts. We're gonna teach you how we convert those leads into sales. We're gonna give you all the softwares we have. We're gonna show you how to build company culture and operations. We're gonna teach you how to make your offers even better. And we're gonna show you how to manage your finances so you know where your money's going and how you can get more to the bottom line. So if that sounds like something you want, go to wealthybusiness.com, book a call with our team today, and we will help you scale with purpose. So I actually do have a question about how you've built what you've built. As a guy who watches you from afar and has seen your career expand, you know, my first introduction to you was, I think I heard you on Bigger Pockets back uh, in maybe 2015. So it's been about 10 years almost. And I read 10X and I was like, okay, this makes sense. I actually reread re it again last year because I was like, I wonder like how I would perceive it today. I yeah, read it yeah. 10 years ago when yeah. I had nothing. And I was like, wow, it was crazy. He was talking about a lot of things that yeah, yeah, yeah. make a yeah, lot of awesome, sense man. today. Yeah. Like you were like, dude, nobody's using Twitter. I'm going to just go blast it. Yeah. You know, you got to put in 10 times more work than you thought originally. And just this concept of, yeah, you might not hit 10 X, but you'll get the result you want. Like yeah. it's just 10 times harder than you think. Yeah. And um, it resonated having actually done things. And so as I was rereading it, it made me think about like how you came up because I was like, all right, this dude was a drug addict and he didn't really start until his thirties. Yeah. 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 Like, and then what were you doing? You were just going to dealerships yep. and sales training. Like. Yeah, dude, I was going door to door. You know, I saw your little room out here with all the chairs in it. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I shit, man, that was a big room. Yeah. I'm like, man, if I could ever get 40 people in one room, I'm going I'm to make it. Yeah. Like I didn't have any clue what I was doing. Right. So I just go to a town. I was scared all the time. Part of that 10 X thing is really, it was fear driven. Yeah. I think the envy thing is fear driven. The competition concept, you know, I, I believe competitions cost me billions of dollars. Instead, because, instead because of I embracing. should have been collaborating. Oh, okay. Got I, it. I, I didn't, you You're know, if you off. got something, I thought I lost something. Hmm. So it was, a, it was a scarcity. I was brought up in a scarcity kind of environment. Right. So when I was out calling on these car dealers, I'm like, you know, I got to call on him. Then I got to call on another one. I got to call on another one. It was like, a, like during those years, what were you making? Like just trying to go train their guys. Oh, 30 grand a year. Really? How yeah. long were you doing that? Three years. When did you finally like have a breakthrough? Uh, it was in Salt Lake city. Okay. Salt Lake city. I was almost going to quit the, 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 the I asked God door -door for a sign. Sales. I was in Houston, Texas. I said, God, you got to give me a sign. Mm -hmm. I just come to done a city that lost money. I said, I need a sign. God, you have to show me a sign. God, show me a sign. God, if you're real, show me a sign. Yeah. And I got in my car. I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I forget. I was driving a, a Toyota Camry. Mm -hmm. Got in my car. And in front of me was a car with the license plate, Salt Lake City. And okay. I said, that's the sign. Monday, I flew to Salt Lake City. And I, somehow something changed. My pitch changed. My offer we sold three or 400 tickets and bang, I became, that became the start of what, I, what I'm doing today. So what Educating were you Educating large rooms of people. So you were selling tickets. To sales training. Okay. For auto dealers on how they needed to change their process. Okay. And be transparent. And what year was this? This how old is were you? 19, I'm 30. So 1988. Okay. And you start selling out these rooms. And, 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 and the, 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 yeah, I start selling the rooms out. I, I had this idea that you're going to meet a customer on a car lot and you're going to say, thank you for coming in. What can I get you information on? This was revolutionary, dude. Mm. 
What and was your guys, track record to this point that you knew? Were you in? Were you selling cars yeah, before I'd that? I sold cars for seven years. Okay, got it. And what I would do, you know, I, I, you know, I learned how to sell cars based on a trickery, which is I'm control and trickery and, mm -hmm. and a bit of like withholding information. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that it didn't work very well. And so what I did was I flipped it and started telling people what they wanted. Hey, I'm going to give you price payment, down payment figures on your car, interest rates. Basically, it's what I still do today on my webinars. I do this information overload trick. Yeah. You're not playing the, the mind games. Hide the, hide the, I don't play hide the weenie. Yeah. Because the more you hide the weenie, the more everybody wants to see the weenie. <laughs> so what I did was I said, I'm going to give you price payment, down payment figures on your car. I'm going to give you interest rate. And dude, it works so good. Because people are like, yeah, that's exactly what I want. Yeah. And now they didn't want it. Mm. It's like, as long as you know, there's going to be, we, we had dinner last night and there had to be, the guy had to order $20,000 worth of food. Yeah. Without exaggeration. Mm. Man, they bring that much food out. You're not hungry anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like what? I don't but, even know what you would get. <laughs> uh, uh, there was a crab this big. <laughs> okay. Okay. There was a Tommy Hawk like that big. Like uh, the Tommy Hawk was a thousand dollars or something. It's poppies. Yeah. Wagyu Tommy Hawk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but, but the point is we just, I, I was feeding the customer. Yeah. And do my sales went mm. nuclear and the speed at which I was selling people changed. Mm. And so I started observing that I was recording myself every day, videoing myself, recording customer conversations. And I started listening to all this stuff. I became obsessed with studying the sales cycle. And this is what I would later sell to car dealers. Wow. Yeah. You know, what's funny now that I think back to how you do sell, you know, I went to growth con um, last year. And I noticed, dude, you guys just have the sheet right there with the prices of everything. Yeah. You know, there's it's not some big pitch or reveal. It's just like, dude, this is what we got. And it's not even like this crazy sheet. It's just like a basic piece of paper. Cardone 360. Yeah. You know, this is it. 40 grand. 40 grand. This is underneath it. it 80,000. Yeah. Underneath it. 140,000. <laughs> it's just right there. And the guy looks at it and he's like, oh my God. But you see in the morning, he, he just got there and he's looking, he's not hungry. Yeah. It's very similar to a menu okay. in, in a restaurant. Hmm. 40 grand. Now watch the guy like 40 grand. And then he sees 80 grand. Then he's like, he's looking around. He's like, I wonder how many people are going to buy this. Cause he's not. Yeah. He's, he's like, it. Dang, I ain't doing none of this. Yeah. Okay. And then he hears something at nine at 10 o'clock. Hmm. Which one is that? Hmm. Want, oh, well, let me see which one that's on. Now, where, where do I, where do I get more of that information? Yeah. 40 grand. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Then he sees 80 grand. Oh my God. Yeah. I wonder who else is going to do this. <laughs> and then 11 o'clock. Wow. I wonder which, oh, what, what is that one going to cost? So I'm not hiding. Why, why hide? Yeah. Okay. Like if you've ever been to one of those conferences where they, they promise you Tony Robbins is going to be there, mm -hmm. but you got to listen to like seven speakers before Tony comes mm -hmm. and you got to, or the timeshare. Yeah. Two days in Hawaii on the Marriott, <laughs> but then you got to go there. And you got to suffer through the sales presentation. You know. Do you think they do that because? Oh, it works. It does work. One. Okay. It works, but nobody ever feels good about it. Right. That's the problem. It's sleazy. Yeah. Do you think that you don't have to do that because of your brand and reputation? I, I think I don't have to do that because I'm gonna I'm gonna fill up when that room's empty. There's gonna be another room. So I just keep I just keep growing the top of the funnel. So you're not concerned about whether, you know, I guess those specific people buy or not. You already know because it's abundance. You're like, I got another opportunity and another yeah. opportunity. Yeah. Or maybe they don't buy today, but, you know, they saw the menu. Mm. They're going to be thinking about it. Yeah. They're going to be thinking about it. I'll get them tomorrow. Mm. I'll get them when it's the right time for them. Right. Maybe, maybe today's not the right time. Mm. Maybe I'm not right for you yet. Yeah. You know, but at least I offered it. Like in, in the car business, it was always in the car business. What they taught you was until you got a commitment from a buyer, real estate does some of this. If you didn't get a commitment, you didn't disclose numbers. Yeah. And I was like, how could I get a commitment without showing numbers? Like, I don't even know how to assess value without knowing a price, whatever it is. Like if I go buy a shirt, I'm going to want to know how much it is. I, I don't just grab the shirt. Brandon Dawson, he just grabbed the shirt. He don't give a shit. <laughs> He's like, give me 10 of these. Mm. 
and get to the register, he won't even know what it billed for. But that's not me. Me, I'm like, I need to know how much that thing is. Oh, it's yeah. $28. Okay, good. I can do it. Mm. You still do that. One hundred. I know the price of everything I buy. Even the cheap crap. You're like, this ain't worth it. You don't buy it. Don't matter. Wow. Don't matter. I was playing blackjack last night. You know, I'm playing 50 bucks. The guy comes. <laughs> Why? But Why? Dude. What's the point? For what? Like, it, that still gets you going? Like to play 50 bucks? Well, I, literally, like, look, <laughs> I'm playing 50, that right? And and guy next to me, guy next to me, JJ, he's playing. He does this before the, he, he boom, and puts a big stack down, 500. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, boom. Closes his eyes, boom, $1,000. <laughs> I'm still betting 50 bucks. Uh, Can't do it, man. But, but why do you gamble like even such little money? Do you, it, 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 I don't know. It's a good question, you know? Because I I came up gambling. I'm from I mean, Vegas, I won $1,000 right? last night. So slow and steady. But you'll probably blow it tonight. No. You're oh. going to take your winnings and cash out? Because you're holding the chips. You would have taken your winnings if you you wouldn't be carrying chips around if you weren't going to yeah. play. I mean, I just enjoy, you know, <laughs> I enjoy sitting with the guys and playing playing for, it, it's a way for me to blow three or four hours. Now, backgam playing backgammon. Uh -huh. Did you bring up backgammon and, and Brandon with Brandon? He told me a little bit about yeah. the games that you guys do. Yeah. I mean, we, you know, we'll go six, seven hours boom, at a stretch, maybe eight, 10 hours. Right. Just banging back and forth, just over and over. Yeah. The thing that I used to love gambling, I, I'm a craps guy, yeah. a blackjack okay. guy. And I would play when I was broke because it was like, dude, this is the only way I know how to potentially right, 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 make right, money. Right. And now I look at it and I'm like, dude, yeah. I could guarantee myself making money doing this versus yeah. messing around. Now, yeah. if you're just doing it for pure entertainment, it's yeah. like, like whatever. It's just entertainment. Yeah. That's all it is. For me. Yeah. But, you know, that guy won 11 grand last night. Mm -hmm. I walk away a thousand. Yeah. I'm like, man, I should bet like you. And he says, no, you shouldn't. <laughs> Dude, just keep doing your thing. <laughs> he says, I'm the idiot here. He yeah. was going to talk about himself. Yeah. I said, I because he, he, he had like a thousand dollars on one bet. And I'm like, dude, I cannot imagine ever doing that. Right. I, I, maybe it was two grand, whatever. Right. Cause I made a thousand dollar bet before, but the way he would throw it in over and over again, I was like, I cannot imagine doing that. He's like, you buy a $300 million building. Yeah. I said, I know. But I cannot do that. Yeah. You go spend 20 grand on a dinner. I, know, I I wouldn't spend 20 grand on a dinner. You wouldn't? No. That other guy did. I ate his dinner. Do you spend any? Okay. Hold, this is a different topic. Yeah. So do you spend money on anything that's like, yeah. I guess, lavish? Yeah. Wine. French wine. wine. French wine. Okay. Yeah. If I, if I, if I, if I do anything that's stupid, it's going to be on that. What's your favorite wine? Uh, well, there's a lot of them out there, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's the thing about the wine thing. You can't ever really figure it out. So we just got a seller. So, oh yeah, I'm trying to figure out what to fill it with. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can help you. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I, we'll, we'll have a good bottle sometime. Yeah. But you know, you got, you got to learn about them. Yeah. And the regions and, you know, anyway, it's, it's a ridiculous thing. Most people get over it and don't get rid of their sellers later. I've, I've noticed, um, but there's some, the wine's only as good as the people you're with. Yeah. So if you, if you're around dumbasses, <laughs> the wine's terrible. It doesn't matter how expensive it is. Right. I was once in, uh, we were in France and I walked in, the guy had this beautiful place, you know, $25,000 wines and thousand dollars. And I said, look, bro, here's the deal. I want you to show me, try this sometime. The best wine you have for the least amount of money. So like the best value, essentially. No, I, I, I said, I need something like exotic, but cheap. What's cheap? I don't know, bro. Show me. Because you know these, <laughs> what, what do you call them? What do you call the wine guy? The winos or? No, no. Uh, the, oh, I, sommeliers? The, sommeliers, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't think they know what they're talking about most of the <laughs> I think they're bullshitters. So <laughs> I they're said- They're just good but, salespeople. Yeah, yeah. Well, they just want to go for the most ex expensive bottle. Like we, I bought an $8,000 bottle here. Okay. At Dahlia's or D uh, Delilah's. Delilah's on the wind. So I'm sitting there. I said, hey, man, show me your wine. I'm like, eight grand. This is a true story. Eight. <laughs> this was a year ago. Brandon was there. My wife was there. We were celebrating a birthday or something. And I said, $8,000 for one bottle of wine. I don't even remember the name of it. Sh uh, Chauvin Blanc. Uh -huh. 8,000. That's ridiculous. And it's before I could even finish ridiculous. Bring me that bottle. Wow. That was the most expensive bottle I ever bought. Wow. And I loved it. It was fantastic.
But we we celebrate in a big victory. We had a big victory that was many, many times more than that. Yeah. Uh, I don't regret that. I remember, I remember it. I have a great uh, memory about it. It was worth it. And yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't doing financially. It was not putting anybody in the family in harm's way. Right. Right. What do you think about these Super Bowl tickets? Have you looked at them out here? I have not because I have the best seat. Where, where's that? At home. Yeah. The boxes are like two and a half million bucks. Crazy, dude. For a couple hours. Yeah. A lot of people get people obligated there. Yeah. You know? So you would look at that and you'd be like, that's that's stupid. Yeah, I ain't doing that. <laughs> but I'm going to spend 10 million on our event. Right. You know, for three days. Yeah. But I got an audience for three days. Right. So there's no ROI in the Super Bowl. I mean, not for me. Right. Like, now I know the big sponsors, the big guys, the Fidelities of the world and the Merrill Lynch's and the AT&T's and, the, you know, the Coca-Cola's, they, they're like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. You know, that's the game they play. But so your game, you like as a, as a wealthy, because I've noticed wealthy people, there's like only a few things they all like doing. They're like, you know, like you said drinking wine or something like that maybe it's you just mentioned gambling for a art, little bit art, golf art, art, i've been buying a lot of art art yeah art that's another wealthy art, person arts, thing arts a deal, a thing like brandon was saying he's a member of like six different courses oh yeah dude he loves a, golfing he, and and he he knows i'm never going to understand it by the way yeah why did you never get into it i'm well, a golfer now. well no i don't mean the golfing i mean the membership thing oh okay now he is heavy on memberships um, going network, that kind of networking. Yeah. Like he'll, he, he thinks nothing of it to pay a hundred grand to go to a, a milking event. Yeah. You know, I just don't like doing that. And I definitely don't like having six golf courses, none of which I use <laughs> for what? Yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I'm right. Right. You just don't enjoy it. I mean, the, the super wealthy do this. Yeah. They spend money and, give money and connected to all kinds of things that they never even use. Right. So I'm not saying I'm right on it. I'm just saying I'm not for you. I'd rather go to his membership. <laughs> just know the wealthy people and go yeah. join them. Yeah, exactly. So you do the car dealership thing yeah. and you figure out how to sell these rooms. Yeah. At what point do you start making some serious dough? Uh, there was a guy that I reached out to. I had studied. He was promoting this guy. Mm-hmm. This guy was a mentor to me and I knew this guy was toward the end of his career. I could tell things were, he hadn't changed. And I called the promoter up and I said, you know that his career is ending. Yeah. It's over. I mean, it's going to die at some point, just like mine will. Mm -hmm. I said, bro, I am the next thing. Mm. And I, I, and he's like, yeah, yeah. You know how many times I hear that? His name was Bob Moore. He's like, yeah, you know how many times I heard that? I said, all right, I got 400 people in a room right now with 20, and it took me 20, 20 days to sell them. He's like, that's impossible. I said, okay. He's like, what are you charging? I said, it was $120,000, uh, $300 tickets. And it only took, in that case, it took 13 days to sell the whole de deal. He's like, that's impossible. If you can do that, I got to see you. Mm. Flew into Denver, watched my deal, uh, Salt Lake City, watched the deal. He's like, that's amazing. He dropped the other guy and took me on. And then I started doing eight of those, eight, 16 events a month. So was he two, setting two up days. the events and yeah. all that stuff? He promoted them. Uh, I got 35% of the gate. He got 65%. I paid him millions to do that. Like, So you that's when you started making your first Yeah, I started millions. making some money. Yeah. I went from making 30 grand a year to making, uh, you know, a couple mil million bucks a year. And how and old, I thought I was the shit. Dude. Yeah. How old were you when that happened? I'm 33, 34, 30. Yeah. 33, 34. Okay. Started stacking all of into real estate. Okay. So I'm 34 now. Yeah. So I'm now curious. Yeah. What are you making a year right now? A few million. Yeah. 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 You're so far ahead of me, dude. Yeah. You're making it online too. Yeah. Like you have a life. Yeah. I didn't have a life. I was on the road without exaggeration. Mm -hmm. I was on the road. Uh, one time I was on the road for 165 days without going home. Mm -hmm. I would do a gig, two gigs, and then I'd add consulting at the back of it. Yeah. Literally didn't go home. I have no wife, no kids, nothing. I had no life. So you're just single dude, just getting after just it on the road. Just banging, man. Banging. So I had no network, no support. I was a vagabond, pirate, like just traveling gypsy. How long did this go on for? Uh, 
until I was 45. So you did this for about 12, 12 years, years yeah. just grinding out the event circuit. Three, three million miles. Wow. And Flight then you're miles. throwing every dollar back into real estate. Or saving it. Yeah. Just, I didn't throw enough money into real estate. I wish I'd have thrown it all in, but I was scared because I, I was certain my career was coming to an end. So the first year we did it with this guy, he's taking me around the country at the end of it, the end of the year, I'd done 16 times 12, whatever that is. Mm -hmm. That many live events, yeah. eight hours a day. And at the end of the year, I'm like, how many, how many years do you think we can do this? You think we can do it a whole nother year? Hmm. I'm 34 years old. I said, you think I'll be able to do this one or two more years? He's like, uh, bro, he's like, you're going to be doing this 10 years from now. Mm. Okay. It's been 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> doing events. 30 yeah. years. Yeah. You know? So at 45, what changed? 45? Um, what, what year is this? 45 and 58 is 2000. Oh, yeah. The world came to an end. Okay, so that was 2008 when yeah. things had to change. Yeah. So these guys stopped paying for events. Car dealer, 9,000 car dealers went out of business. Right. Bob Moore, he imploded. Mm -hmm. He couldn't, he couldn't run anymore. He was stealing from me too. Mm. Um, you know, world came to an end. Yeah. I had one industry that knew me and I made a mistake. You know, I stayed, Why do you think you made a mistake? I stayed in my lane. You didn't try to expand. You just yeah, kind of exactly were good. Did. Like, oh, this is, let's just keep riding it out. Yeah. I stayed in one lane, I stayed in one lane. And when traffic backed up, I was just sitting there waiting for my, uh, you don't want to stay in a lane. You want to use the highway. Mm. And I didn't build the highway out. You know, I didn't build the other lanes out. So then I got busy in 2008 building out the, you know, who, who I would become. Yeah. What made you, I guess, I want to say like what influenced you? I mean, 08 obviously made Fear. you pivot, right? You had to pivot for the <laughs> first had time. Had to, had to. It, it's usually I, failure. I, I, knew, I knew I had to before this though. I, I hated the audience that I was talking to. Hate's a big word, but I, I, I didn't hate them, but I hated me talking this same pitch for 10 years. I, I, was on, I was on rote, man. I was on, it wasn't just boring, it was lazy. It was late. I was lazy. I was mm. just ba da 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 doing the same thing over and over again. Way, way below my potential. Yeah. You know, th but this is a story of my whole life, man. I've always, always operated up below my potential. So 08 forced you to adjust. Yeah. And, and to build an audience, new audience. Because you felt like that audience was tapped out. Or, well, they were. I mean, yeah. they, 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 half of them went out of business. And so you start to just doing general sales now, training. Now, now I start talking about sales. I stayed in the sales lane because that was my lane, but started talking about for anything sales. Yeah. Any kind of sales. Mm -hmm. Boom. Next thing you know, I get a contract with a furniture company. Uh, Morgan Stanley calls and hires me. So boom, I start. Oh, okay. I can do this. Then one day we looked up and said, why are we training salespeople? Jared was with me now. Nobody wants to learn how to do this. <laughs> you know, what is it they really want to know about? Money. Mm. And I started talking about money mm. and money. Man, then, then, then I started doing all this stuff. Mm. And I said, this is how you get it. This is how you keep it. This is how you multiply it. This is the game. Yeah. And then every once in a while, I talk about real estate and bang. Yeah. People were so interested in real estate. That's what I've realized. I didn't. I didn't know this when I came on the scene, but it's like, okay, so real estate's how I made my money. And I'm like, all right, I mean, I can only speak from how I did it, right? Yeah. But I didn't realize real estate was everyone. Everyone's interested in it. It's not just sales where it's like, yeah. you got this niche, especially auto sales yeah, yeah. or real estate sales. Yeah, yeah. It's tiny. Yeah, tiny. So you talk about real estate sales, the dentist isn't going to have a conversation with you. Right. Talk about real estate investing. The dentist is like, how do I do that? Exactly. So, you know, talk about car sales. No one <laughs> wants to talk about that. Yeah. Except what? A car dealer, maybe? Yeah. And they don't even want to talk about it. Mm. You know, so, so I was just like, this is the big mistake I think everybody makes. They end up in a business that maybe they were in. It was their environment. You were good at it. And so you start doing that. And you think that's your purpose. It's not, you know, I, you know, I should have 
I should have planned a business that was scalable from the get go. Well, so you obviously have stayed in the same lane, right? It's no, we kept the lane. Yeah. I didn't stay in it. Well, I'm saying, um, I guess the skill set you developed of being a great, um, educator, a great, great at events and performing and all those things. Like yeah, yeah, you still yeah. do that today. Right. Uh, yeah. 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 So you didn't like totally shift. You shifted audience and who you're targeting yeah. and everything yeah. else and the way you did it. Right. Yeah. Because I was, um, you know, Bradley lives out here. And so a lot of the things uh, you guys did early on with, um, you know, him and the virtual yeah. training. Right. Yeah, yeah. Cause I remember having the discussion with him about, uh, I was like, how did you even find Grant? Like, how did you guys even link up originally? He's like, yeah, oh, yeah. Grant was just doing all these events and I was doing events and like, we were all just traveling all the time doing this crap. And then nobody was doing education on the internet. Yeah. Like, how did all that happen? Yeah. Well, well, Brad, Brad, I was traveling. Yeah. I was making a lot of money doing these events. Yeah. I'd become a big name in the auto industry. Right. I would see Brad. I met Brad at a convention. They're having a convention here in town right now. He was peddling uh, his virtual yeah. thing. He was peddling that for seven years before I did it with him. Mm. I didn't. So I don't think he was doing, he, he definitely wasn't doing any speaking. That's not what he was doing. He was, he was trying to find the speakers, building light, light speed. He was trying to find speakers. Yeah. And so um, I didn't, I think seven or eight years. I said, nah, 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 <laughs> not interested. Cause I was buying real estate. Right. I bought 2,200 units. Like, and he would be like, oh, you're not paying attention. I'm like, okay. <sighs> oh, yeah, okay. I'm not paying attention to you. Right. And then one day we did. I said, when I do it with you, I guarantee I'll be the biggest producer you have. Mm. And then when we, when one day we did it and then I, I had time. Um, it was 2009. I yeah. couldn't buy any real estate. Bang, shifted, took all our content and made it friendly to all audiences. Mm -hmm. uh, he was very auto centric. That's 90% of his business was there. It's still a massive portion of it is still in that space. Hmm. And we broke away from all that. Right. And so. Um, that was your first time like on digital with education? No, no, we were, we had done video. We, I had, we, I was selling $9,000 videos oh, to really? car dealers. Yeah. Like DVDs and stuff. DVDs. That's crazy. G pods. <laughs> you remember the, 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 uh, the small little, pod by um apple it was uh, an ipod yeah the ipod yeah i call it a g pod okay i dropped nine thousand dollars worth of content on it it was a 145 dollar ipod i sold for nine grand oh you just filled it with your own training totally. oh my gosh that's funny and and i just like the g pod i was like i've never heard of a g pod and then, <laughs> and then when 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 we went virtual when we went online um i mean we i tore that thing up like you, you started to see the scalability of that versus yeah. everything else. Yeah. And we started less speaking. Yeah. Then I cut off car dealers. Mm. I, I literally like, I'm not coming to any more of your events in 2012. You didn't want to be associated. Like you, you wanted to break away from that. Yeah. I said, Jared, we're not going back to another event, uh, auto event. Mm. I don't recommend this. Like you got to do the right, when you do this, when you break an audience, you had to break at the right time. We had other people supporting them, but I was no longer available for them. Right. 12 years later, you're back. <laughs> Auto guy paying me quarter of a million dollars to have dinner. Right. That's, that's how I'm getting paid tonight. It's crazy. Stupid. Yeah. But you had to cut it off because if you keep feeding the beast, they're going to keep taking advantage of you. You just keep getting sucked back in. Yeah. I'm like, no, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go, if I'm going to do free or low margin stuff, I'm going to go do it for the rest of the world. that doesn't know me. Mm. All I did was shift all this energy from this group that really wasn't paying me. Only a small percentage were paying me. Most of them were denying me, rejecting me. And then I'm like, I'm going to shift all that energy and talk to a different audience. Mm. They're not going to pay me either until one day they will. Yeah. And so now I had to start talking about real estate sales, insurance sales, dental sales, chiropractic, you yeah. know, HVAC. And then the rooms got bigger. So you start doing this in 2012. And yeah. You're just talking about money, still sales, yeah. everything else. You start getting on social media mm -hmm. and at what point does it become this 10x 16, that we know today? 2016. That's when it, you we finally did. realized what it was. People started 10x, say 10x. Hmm. You were just saying I it. remember I got yeah. through, uh, threw me to 10 at one, at a con we did a, con a second conference we did, I think it was 16. 
And that's the, the second says, 10X. Let's throw a 10, man. I'm like, shit, this sh people like this shit. I had no clue, dude. Yeah. Like this was not a plan. How, what, what was this the was first just, 10X event? It was in Cabo, uh, no, it was in um, Cancun. Okay. We don't even count it as an event. That's how much of a disaster it was. <laughs> the first one was zero. 10X growth conference, zero. Okay. Had, had 80 people there. That was in Cancun. It was in Cancun, yeah. And you just I were mean, like, let's just all hang out. Yeah, we, we didn't know. We, we, I talked. Yeah. There's purple lights. Mm. The stage is this big. Yeah. The whole thing's this big. Wow. This room. <laughs> you know, there was probably 80 people there, 40 of which, you know, didn't pay. Yep. And it was just a money event. Like I, I don't know what it was. Yeah. We didn't know what it was. And so it didn't but, have a name. And then you do yeah. a second one. Then the next one we did, Diplomat Hotel. We had, my, t my staff was bored. There was no plan on growth conference, okay? No. Yeah. So, so it's just, I'm, I'm, you're doing stuff and stuff happens, mm -hmm. right? So uh, we, it was 2016, yeah, 2015, 2014, 2015. So it was 2015 or 16. I was in this little dumpy office and my staff was having a problem with too much work. Okay. And I said, okay, guys, you got too much work, huh? Yeah, I'm tired of hearing this shit. <laughs> so here's what we're going to do since you have too much work. It was end of December. I said in um, 77 days from right now, we're putting on a conference at the Diplomat Hotel and there's going to be, uh, there's going to be 1,200 people there. Mm. We have 77 days to sell 1,200 tickets. My last events sold 40 tickets. <laughs> okay. Because these guys were bitching about having too much work, da, da, da. It was like four or five days left in the year. Yeah. I said, we're doing this. It's going to be called 10X Growth Conference. Um, start making landing pages, selling tickets. It's at the Diplomat. We don't know who's going to be there. This is the price of the tickets. Go. We sold 2,200 tickets. Whoa. Our target was 12. Wow. In, in 77 days. Mm. And I was like, shit. We didn't, we'd never done an event. You, cause you were always using the other guys. Uh, the other guys set it up. Yeah. They never spent any money. Like we spent money. Marketing. Yeah. And we brought, I brought nice. in a bunch of my friends to speak. Yeah. You know, and, and it was just, and that was 2016. I think it was 2016. Cause what are we in 24? Yeah, that's right. Cause the first one I went to was in 2018. Here yeah. In Vegas. That was, yeah. Mandalay Bay. That was 5,000 people. Yeah. And now we're like, we're like, dang, this is my second event. Yeah. The Bandalay Bay? Yeah. Was second that, yeah, that was number three. Two, I think. It, was, it was two. Technically two. Yeah. It was two. But remember, there was a zero. <laughs> yeah. So okay. do, do you think that that event is what really put you on the map? No, no, not that one. Really? Okay. The third one would be, would be, no, no, it put, it put us. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it did. You know, because I people, feel like for people me, started talking, they started saying, dude, the guy put 8,000 people in a room or whatever the number was. I'll tell you from my perspective yeah. as an attendee, right? Like That's I had, the one that came out of the ceiling. Yeah. Me and my wife were behind the kabuka. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. We, 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 we basically own, you know, we basically said we're going to be stars. Yeah. You know, we put on an event where I've never talked about this, by the way. Mm hmm. I well, want to know because I am in the event space now. I'm yeah. like so curious. Yeah, I came out of the about. ceiling. I opened it up coming out of the ceiling. Yep. Okay. Like fire. It was showtime now. <laughs> it was showtime. It was like, okay, I am going, I'm, this is a per personal private conversation I'm having with myself because I'm having to decide to rig up this thing where I come out of the ceiling. Yeah. This is TV shit. Like it's, 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 it's <laughs> entertainment stuff. It's yeah. not business. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm coming out of the ceiling. I'm telling my staff, I'm going to come out of the ceiling. I'm going to be chained down. Mm -hmm. it's going to be 10 X. Like you got to be willing to go for this, to do the, pull this shit off. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, I, and, and the hardest part of it is owning, like I am going to be a star, right? I am going to be the star for this moment and come out of the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And so that's when this whole thing became a very much more theatrical and a bigger show. And, and that's why I was saying entertainment, yeah. like you've been doing yeah. it for a while with yeah. events and everything. But the thing that stuck out to me 
as an attendee at that event. That was like my first ever business event. Uh -huh. I had just retired from baseball. So I'm going in this business world, dude. And I had already been doing real estate and stuff. And so somebody invites me to this event, second row. They bought me a ticket, like mm. a $10,000 ticket, right? And so I'm like, all right, let's see what this is all about. Yeah. And so first thing, you just did what you just said. I'm like, right. what the heck is going on in this yeah, place, yeah, dude? Yeah, yeah. And people are Were going- Were you impressed by that? Dude? Yeah, I was like, people are going nuts, yeah. right? No, we got the people going, bro. Oh. Huh? And so like, I was already familiar because I had heard you on um, Bigger Pockets maybe a yeah. couple of years before yeah. or something, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And I was like, damn, it's like this? Yeah. They do it like that over yeah. here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then um, I remember coming away inspired because I was like, because I heard all the speaker. Here's the funny thing, dude. So you had all these speakers. Yeah, and we still had our lineup messed up too. You told me this before that yeah, like yeah, everybody yeah. was allowed to pitch. It was just a- Hey, follow yeah. me on Instagram. Yeah, like, yeah. Pe people, I'm like, guys, we just spent all this money and we weren't spending big money yet. I mean, that was a big money. How much did that yeah, cost? That was- Four million. Yeah. I so, mean, that's a, it was a lot of money, right? Yeah. But it worked for us. It See, did. internally, what the world didn't know was prior to this, bro, we had done an event where there was 40 people. <laughs> In Cancun, okay, mm -hmm. where our lights were purple, right? Like we didn't even have the lighting right. Like if I show you the pictures, you're gonna be like, "Is that jacket white or purple?" Wow. And we we no clue. There was no speaker. There was no agenda. There was no entertainment. There was no music. There was nothing. Second time, twenty two hundred people. Yeah. Boom, we did it right. Third time, eight thousand people. Right. That's the one you were at. Yep. Next time, 34,000 people. That was, I think, Miami, right? That was yeah, the stadium? Miami yeah. Marlins Stadium. Okay. And then we we didn't do any more big ones. Yeah, it wasn't worth it. Because I'm like, I already did a big one. Yeah. I'm not going to get credit for doing two big ones. Right. Like, this is just a business decision now. Yeah. I've already done what I needed to do. Yeah, I accomplished it. I showed the world I could do it. Now, they'll keep talking about it forever. Yeah. You, 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 when you do something big, you get benefit of it more than once. Yeah. You don't have to keep doing it. You, you don't have to keep. Yeah. Well, what I noticed yeah. about that event, so that's my first introduction into like this that's crazy, this uh, whatever this guru is. scene, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, dude, people were going nuts for each speaker. Yeah, I'm like, who are these guys? You know, it's my first time seeing any of them. Yeah, right. I'm bringing them out. Yeah, razzing the audience. Yeah, and people are like, dude, it's uh, Ty Lopez, it's Russell Brunson. Yeah, yeah. Ed Milet. And I'm yeah. like, I have never heard of one of these people in my life. Yeah. Because I'm coming from like uh, the normal, see, hot, whatever yeah, world of yeah, celebrities, yeah. right? See, see, and I, I, I'm coming from a world yeah. where I've done 15 years trying to promote myself. Yeah. I think I'm doing these guys the favor of a lifetime. You are. Oh, God With 8,000 people? And then I get 8,000 people to be excited about people they've never heard of. Yep. Like, just like what you're saying. Yep. Okay, Grant, this guy that came out of the ceiling is now saying this guy. He's is endorsing the best. this guy and this guy and this like guy. Like, I'm edifying these people and spending all this money to do it, right? Yep. And then they're upset about it. I'm like, uh. <laughs> Bro, so let me tell you this. Yeah. Let me edify <laughs> this situation because now that I'm in events, in a similar way in that I never planned it or wanted it. Dude, so I started doing coaching in 2020 and, you know, I, I went to our students. I was like, what if we just got together and did a little mastermind? So the first one was in 2020, eight people in my house. Yeah. Right. Then COVID hits and all this crap. But then it became a quarterly thing. It was like, well, let's meet up every quarter and just do this meeting. Well, it just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, dang, dude, we got to get a hotel now. Yeah. And then four years later, it's now become this thing. Uh, with WealthCon, where every time it's over a thousand every quarter, every ninety days, and this next one should be two thousand at wow. the Caesars. Wow! And it's every quarter, nonstop, and it's actually pretty easy for us now because the systems are built. Yeah. But I totally relate because you're the only one who would get it for what I'm saying because it was never intended. Yeah, to yeah, be yeah. anything. Yeah, yeah. And as far as speakers go, bro. Dealing with egos and dealing with people thinking they're doing you a favor oh my God. when you're in fact doing them a favor yeah, and you just deal with all the crap of, oh, I need more minutes. What about my reimbursements? What about that? And I'm like, dude, oh my gosh, bro. I have literally uh, 150 people that want to speak yeah, and I have eight slots. Right. You don't understand who's doing who a favor. It's, 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 it's disgusting and it's coming from people you would expect that would get it come on yeah. like like anyway <laughs> <laughs> you're 
you know, I had a guy, he wants me to go to London and do this gig. And I like the guy. Yeah. Rob Moore. I hope Rob sees this. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. And so I said, Jared, it's about 550 for the plane and me to go over there. So tell him I'll do it for 250. I like him. I, otherwise, I, I have no reason to go there. Like if I need to pick up 250, I can, I can pick it up tomorrow night. Like I don't need to go to London to pick up 250. Yes, a lot. So, so, or spend the money on the plane or anything. Yeah. And I said, I like him. I want to do something. I like the people in London, blah, blah, blah. And the guy texts me on WhatsApp. Let me look at it, man. Can you do any better? Mm. You know, event costs have gone up. And I'm like, bro, forget it. <laughs> forget okay. It. I love you. You're awesome. But like, come on. Yeah. I expect more from you than that. Yeah. Can't act like a baby. Yeah. Okay. You don't think I know event costs went up? Like I spend more money on events than anyone. <laughs> yeah. So like, don't make it my problem. Right. Right. I, I, I'll come. But like the, the people, people just need to understand, understand exchange, man. Like what does talking to an empty room make you? Right. Nothing. The fact that you're putting 2000 people at your event in a room, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. The quality then matters. Yes. Like how qualified are they? Yep. And that's the other part too. Yeah. Because you see, see, you're the only one who'd get this. Yeah. So I explain this to people, right? Yeah. Because get, okay. So getting a thousand people is really hard. Just, it doesn't matter if you gave the tickets get, for free. Pay people. You could, yeah. It's hard to get a thousand. Give free right? weed away. <laughs> yeah. The government does it. Yep. So, but the audience will be no good. No good. Right. Yeah. And even if you were to do a, a hundred dollar ticket, the audience will still be no good. That's right. Right. Our event ticket price average is about $800 per ticket. That's quality audience. Yeah. And yeah. people don't understand. And how many of them are traveling in? Almost all of them. Makes them even better. Exactly. People don't get it. Yeah. But. That's what the speaker only, should be asking. The speaker shouldn't be asking. Yeah. Were you going to pay me back to fly? Yeah. Here's my no, speaking dude, fee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bro. Bro. Who's going to be there should be the first question. Right. What did they pay to be there? How many are traveling to be there? I came up with a formula and I think you guys probably do it too. I'm like, you want to know the quality of a room? Take how much they've spent to get there. Yeah. Times it by how many heads are in the room. That's right. That will tell you the quality of the room That's right. and how much money's in the room. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so, I'm like, go, oh, you spoke at a 500 person event where everyone paid a hundred bucks. All right, great. It's worth, they were all locals. Yeah. It's worth $50,000. Yeah. That's the room. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So with that, I mean, you guys obviously throw a ton. Good of job, by now. the way, putting that many people together. Thank you. I've never spoken in one of your deals, but. Well, I, yeah, I know your cost. So I'm like, yeah, eh, I'm not there yet. Yeah. Yeah. But you are, dude. Yeah. See, see, because yeah. what I would rather do, right. I mean, who I have coming this year in April, mm -hmm. bro. What you, day is it on April? April 2nd, 3rd and 4th. Diplomat Hotel, Miami. Miami. Okay. okay. The first speaker, you'd be like, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Like bang. Now, now to get that guy, like money's not even the thing. Like it's not even a money thing. Mm -hmm. So the last speaker on the third day, it was all money. Okay. Big. The first, it, the end of the first day, the, the guy, I've never seen him on a stage before anywhere in the world. Mm. The second day, three guys, one guy's worth 8 billion, maybe 10. Another guy's worth 3.3 .3 billion. Like these guys, they're, they don't require a fee. Yeah. Like, it's relationship. He's flying. One guy, the guy that's worth eight says, I'm flying from England. I'm going to shorten my England trip. He's flying in private to be at your event. He's like, now, er, like you're there, right? Grant. Yeah. yeah. I, said, I said, yeah, let me tell you who else is there. Ding, 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 ding. I go over this whole list and the guy's like, bro, are you going to be there? I'm coming for you. Mm. Like you can't buy this guy. Yeah. Like, the, what are you going to give a guy worth $8 billion? It's just whether or not he wants to choose to be there. Yeah. Yep. You know, and then, then they're, they're never at their, they're never at events. Like, yeah. so you never see these people mm. and we do not announce any of the speakers. I know yours is going to have all the speakers. Yeah. On, yeah. Right? Yeah. So we're, we're at a place where we're like, I'm not telling you. Because you have credibility. You brand. I'm not telling you. Yeah. We just, it's a flex. Yeah, I don't have to tell you, and I'm still going to sell out. Yeah, exactly. Because you you know the brand and trust the brand. Yeah, and, but but it would be a lot easier for my team if I could tell you who's going to be. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So, well, let's talk about selling the events, man. So, yeah. you know, you've sold because how many events do you guys throw a year? I mean, GrowthCon's obviously the flagship. But yeah. Like you have the business boot camps. And yeah, we do a business boot camp. We do a business summit. 
uh, we do a real estate summit. We mm-hmm. do Cardone Ventures 10X 360 leadership workshop, a sales workshop, marketing workshop, um, a real estate workshop, a pitch your deal workshop. We do, I don't know, eight or 10 of those a year now where people come in and bring their deals in. How many, how many like total events are you doing a year? A hundred. A hundred. Over a hundred. Yeah. How many are like, let's say over a thousand people, would you guess? Uh, 30 of them. Wow. Yeah. So you're not involved in throwing the event. Well, then we do another, yeah, I am. Uh, then we do another probably 25 webinars a year. Right. That are in the tens of thousands. So are you involved, but you can't be involved on all those events. No, but I'll do an growth opening. Con. I'll do an opening. Okay. Oh, growth con. I'm not there the whole time. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm doing all but the But I'm interviews. saying like the, when I say involved, like the planning. Yeah. Uh, 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 well, in the beginning I was in, they know what I want out of the event. Yeah. Now here we are 60 days before growth con. I'm literally six, 59 days or something. Now I'm going to start figuring out, okay, what's my opening? Okay, how do I crash into this place? Yeah. Like now we're going to start doing the production stuff. Mm. We have the basics, everything there, but now it's, I got to put the grant on it. How many, like, what do you have to spend on marketing and how many salespeople do you have to like sell out all this stuff, dude? For the, for, we, we have, we have, I don't know, 1200 tickets left right now. Mm-hmm. So next. Uh, but what do you, what do you got to spend to promote it? Uh, I don't know. Jared knows. But millions. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Oh yeah. How many salespeople do you guys have to hit all those leads? 75. 75 and just the event side or like, well, well, we'll take everybody off of everything. So everyone goes to selling tickets. Like hardcore. Mm. You don't, you guys only have 75 salespeople in, in, in Miami. We have another, I think 60 in Scottsdale and we're starting to build out our remote. Got it. But trust me, I want more salespeople. How do you, how, cause I mean, obviously you came from the sales world. Yeah. How do you, I guess, recruit and train I mean, and Jared, 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 Jared knows, knows all, all that. that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, me and him argue about it all the time. You know, I'm like, dude, here's the script. You want it or not? <laughs> like Jared's like, no, you got to explain to people what it is. Grant wants you to buy it. Like Jared, let's let that be a script too. Like Jared yeah. wants, Grant wants you to buy it. Mm. Can I put you down for two? Mm. you know, and then, and then if that doesn't work, then put a salesperson on them. But the first thing should be the order taker. Yeah. I have a big enough audience now. Yeah. So, but he's like, Hey, they need, they need to know, like, I want to do that on everything. Just clobber the easy ones. Yeah. You know, the low hanging fruit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just knock it off the tree and take it and go. Um, But some people need convincing. Would you say that the majority of the revenue comes from events? No, no, definitely not. So people- That, that event, that the one growth conference will do 20 million. Mm. It did that last year. So the rest of the revenue is just coming in from just people- There's a, $135 million that's going to come in from online, digital, workshops, uh, training packages. These are just phone sales. Could be, could be online. It could have been a webinar that I did. They convert it really right. well. So the majority is digital then. Yeah, definitely. So these guys have got to get really good on the phones. Well, they I got to get really good at getting people to call in. Right. Or And set the stage. I, I need, the, 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 the first goal should be the marketer. Yeah. Should soften up this market. Mm-hmm. So the guy's hot enough to say, I want this. Mm. Right. So I have to have a decision maker in quantity. Two, I have to have somebody that wants what I have. Yeah. And three, for the sales guy, I need urgency. How do you create urgency in something that's maybe not an event where, yeah, there's clearly a date, there's urgency. Well, you know, because I'm not like, if the, if the events 60 days out, I won't even mention the date. Hmm. Okay. Because nobody is going to make a decision today for something 90 days from now. Right. Ever. Because urgency is missing. Yeah. Why would I reserve something? I won't. Ever. So how do you get them to have urgency 60 days out? Give them something now. Okay. So you're like, hey, you buy now, you'll get uh, this, tr- this this training. No, no. When, this- you, when you buy this, I'm going to give you that later. Got it. So I'm going to flip the switch. 
Mm. I'm going to sell something else now. Now, you got to claim this later. Your tickets to the event later. Yeah. And if you don't claim it, I'm giving it to somebody else. Mm. It expires. You can't just keep pushing it down. Now, the road. we make, <clears throat> my team makes a mistake over and over. What do they do? So, what I do, because when I, anytime I'm doing a webinar or pitch, anything, I'm like, what do they get right now? That's what we should be selling. You got, oh, no, we're selling this. No, bro, we're selling this. And they're getting that. Mm. Right? Like if the baseball game's tonight, the World Series tonight, well, no problem. Everybody wants it. But this, this moment of time is going to pass. How do I sell next year's World Series? Mm. Well, why would I wait? I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to wait. And last minute, I'm going to go buy those seats. Yeah. So how can, what can you give me now for your event next year? What mm. can you give me right now that I want, that I have to have, that would benefit me and prepare me maybe for next year, but I also benefit from the next year thing? Because I'm not buying next year right now. No, there's no point. And unfortunately, that's what's wrong with the digital guys. The kids that are filling out the landing pages, they're not thinking about the customer. They're thinking about what they need to put on that page. And yeah, everybody yeah. forgot the guy that needs to pull his credit card out right now. We ended up doing that on accident where uh -huh. we would sell our coaching programs and it was like, hey, you get a couple of tickets to WealthCon, you mm -hmm. know? And like, mm -hmm. we do it every quarter. So, you know, you got it within 90 days, no matter what, right? Yeah, exactly. And so we instinctively kind of figured that out. But yeah. I have noticed, I'm like, all right, how do you sell tickets? Like, if the ticket is the ad and yeah. the thing. Well, and the, the other problem you're going to have then later is that, and that's probably why your events have gotten naturally, organically bigger. Yeah. Then what will happen is you're, you're going to find your team setting rooms. That are already sold. Well, they're going to set up the room and then not enough people are going to show up. Yeah. You're going to notice a lot of empty seats. Because they claim it, but they didn't use it. Because they, they don't feel like they bought it. Yes. Bogos never work. Got it. That's why BOGOs don't work. They never bring another person. So how do you do Free it? Free never works. So, so, and what the last thing you want to do, I can't believe, you know how small an audience we're talking to right now? You yeah. and I are basically just talking to ourselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About the event business. Yeah, like, this is nobody, what I, nobody these are my conversations behind the scenes with people. Yeah, yeah, nobody listening to this right now even knows what you and I are talking about right now. They're like, these guys are freaking geek geeking out on shit. <laughs> so, so, but you never want a room with more chairs than people. Oh yeah, no, ever change change the layout, change put tables, do something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, like you know, I think you need to oversell a room by at least twenty percent, maybe thirty percent. We found that yeah, ten twenty yeah. percent is what we have. Yeah, even with big tickets, it's crazy that people who pay big tickets sometimes don't show. It's crazy, crazy dude. <laughs> it happens all the time. I'm like, dude, this dude paid, you know. Five grand for some tickets. He didn't show up. You know? People are like that. <laughs> it's crazy. So, but but you don't want a bunch of those empty spots yeah. in a room because that ruins the vibe of the room too. Yeah. The like getting the vibe of the room, that's what that speaker that you brought, you said, hey, come speak at my gig. Yeah. And he really, he really needs to understand how hard it is to fill a room up. Oh, yeah. You know, with quality people. I mean, fill a room up, one thing. Quality people, another thing. And then put on a great event, another thing. And to be part of that. And to be able to put in your bio, I was part of that. What about your salespeople at events, man? Because, dude, I feel like your guys are so good yeah. at... Well, here, okay. Here's my honest perspective at your event with sales guys. And I kind of tell my team this. I'm like, look, you ever go to one of Grant's events? Dude, these dudes are relentless. They are like, they're on you. And you know, they believe in the product. They want you to buy it. Like they know it's going to help. I go, we got like a lot of wallflowers, dude. People yeah. who are just order takers, just hanging out and yeah. you know, all this stuff. And I'm like, there just is a different tenacity. Well, you don't see behind the scenes, right? Yeah. So well, I'm walking, I'm walking behind the scenes mm -hmm. and I see, you know, two guys, Sam and Bob talking to each other. Yep. And I'm like, you guys going to buy something from each other? Or what? No. Good separate <laughs> yeah you two talking if you know each nothing. other don't talk to each other right so i'm banging them the whole three days yeah okay what's your target does your mom know you're doing that bullshit right now okay mm. you're gonna take care of your mom i ain't taking care of her mm. okay you're gonna take care of her 
your community needs you to stand up. It can't like, like I'm pressing these kids all the time. Yeah. But they need to be told this. Yeah. Because they're going to do what's comfortable. Yeah. You know, uh, we have lunch in the back, the VIP, and we'll bring, maybe we just hired Jeremy or we hired uh, um, Sam or whoever we hired, right? New guy. I'm like, what are you guys doing back here? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, Eddie, Eddie, what do you, why don't you go out there, Eddie? Yeah. And what do you mean? I'm like, you ain't earned your right back here yet, bro. Yeah. Like there's five people back here. There ain't five people in you. Go sell some shit. Yeah. That, those people out there, go talk to them. Go get some people hooked up into the deal. Go help the salespeople. Even yeah. if you're an executive, that's not your job. Go help them out there. Don't sit here back here with me. You've been here three days. You ain't earned your right to be back here, bro. Mm. Go it out there and mix it up. So it starts with management too, you know? So you're setting the tone from the get-go. Yeah. I don't want to talk to any of you fools. Like, go out there and talk to people you yeah, don't we'll know. Yeah, we'll do it like, we'll do a breakfast thing the morning of, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, we got 2,100 people showing up this morning. Yeah. Okay. They're going to be here at eight o'clock to check in. Anybody that could sell anything before nine o'clock this morning, I'm going to double the freaking commission. Okay. I don't even want to pitch it. I like that. Okay. I'm giving you a billion dollars for the game right now, man. I know. That's so, why I'm, I'm here. You know, and, and I'm like, you guys go get it right now. Yeah. I need, I need 40 sales before I even say what we're doing this weekend. Mm. <laughs> Cause it gives me, it gives me, so I said, you guys are going to give me enthusiasm. Yeah. Cause you, I need the momentum too, bro. Yeah. I see what you guys did. Let's yeah, go. I, I, I need to break my streak. Right. Mm. I hadn't had a hit in three games. Dang. But I just need to get on base. So I'm trying to get momentum all the time. So are you just bringing the whole team every event? Like, yeah. How many salespeople do you have? And like, do you have a ratio per Jared person? Knows. Jared knows. Yeah. I don't have any ratios. You're just hyping them up. I'm just like, let's go. That's you know? crazy. How have you stayed with Jared so long? How's Jared stayed with me so long? Yeah, because I remember he he posted a picture of you guys like in a freaking dude. I I mean a pool house or something working like yeah. a decade ago. Yeah, and I think about businesses and partnership, dude. To stay in a partnership and a business for ten plus years, yeah, that's not easy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the number one way that he's kept you know, that people don't talk about is the prop, the, op the opportunity continues to expand. It continues to look like it's going to get easier. You know, that the prosperity awaits us mm. that we're going to make it. The Oasis is right over the next hill. <laughs> is it, it just never gets reached or what? <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it looks like we're getting closer, dude. Like why quit now? Shit. Yeah. Like I, I, I did all this. How I'm you, an asshole. Yeah. Like I'm not, I'm not an easy guy to work with. Yeah. My sales guys, I had a bunch that since I've, I never had to train sales in my life. Uh -huh. I know how to sell. Yeah. Yeah. But now I've started to train them. Yeah. And I'm bringing kind of the same tenacity you're talking about. I'm like, you guys have no idea what like top of the level looks like. You have no idea. You yeah. think you're good. You're not. You got a long ways yeah. to go, which means you have a lot of potential because if you had no potential, then yeah. You are capped and that yeah. is what it is. Yeah. But uh, I have noticed that, I don't know, as I get older, I get less uh, tolerant. Yeah. I'm just like, dude, yeah. I don't have time for this crap. Like, yeah, let's exactly. go. I'm with you. It's hard to find people that think like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But, you know. Yeah. But how do you, how do you, okay, so for like a guy like Jared, yeah. you guys never knew what you were going to accomplish. Like, never, bro. I remember yeah. I was in a meeting, a guy named John Lamb. We didn't even have a studio. It's pre-studio, Grant Cardone. Yeah. And I'm sitting there at my table, can remember it like it was yesterday. And I said, John, we're going to make $1 million a month. And the guy rolled his eyes. He came from the auto industry. Mm -hmm. Smart, very smart guy. Too smart. Mm. Rolled his eyes. I'm like, bro, you can leave now. You and, ain't he, and he's like, huh? I said, bounce. This isn't gonna work, bro. I saw, I saw the roll. Yeah, I saw the roll, bro. You don't believe, bro? Yep. Okay, shit. We do a million a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he didn't believe I could do a million a month. Right. So you got to get rid of those guys, man. Don't, don't like. That's the you, number you, one thing. They got to believe in you, the product, they, the vision. Well, they need to believe in you more than you believe in you. 
Mm. You know, they need to believe, like Jared believes in me more than I believe in me. Mm. And, and, and Ryan does too. Ryan yeah. believes that we can buy more real estate than I believe I can buy. I'm like privately, I don't believe any of this shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. I don't think I'm a star. Mm. Like, I don't think I can make it. I don't think I can do the things I want to do. Right. I don't, I mean, I don't completely believe it. Do you think if I did believe it was going to happen, why would I work so hard? Do you think that you, you have, you know what I'm saying? Like, why yeah. wouldn't I just like, Oh, it's going to happen. Right. But it's not, but I don't think it's going to happen. That's why I grind. Do you, are you still, what day, do you what think day you're is fear driven? What day is today? Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who's working on a Saturday? Yeah. Other than scared people. Right. So fear yes, drives you. I think fear drives me a lot. Mm. You know, I'm not benefiting from like, I don't get a payoff today. Yeah. So why am I doing this? It's an investment and something that happens later. I say, pay the price today. So you can pay any price tomorrow. Mm. And the winners all say this, man, discipline, man, over motivation. Explain discipline, that. discipline, man, show up, show up, show up when your eyes are bleeding, show up when you don't want to show up, show up when it hurts, show up when you're winning, fucking show up again, you know, show up when you're 50 points ahead and put another seven points on the board. Just keep like, laying just it on them. Creep, keep crushing so that you know, okay, I can crush everything. And there's no slow in me. There's no stop in me. you like, it's not for the public, right? It's not to be mean. Who was the team that didn't add the seven points? Oh, yeah, the Miami Dolphin. They had the chance to put more points on the board, but they said, no, nope, we're not going to add the seven. I lost the complete respect to the whole team not mm. doing that. Like, why not, bro? <laughs> why not? Your team is going to need that belief later in the season when people are hurt. Right. Forget about the game today. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what's the right thing to do? Right thing to do is always put more points on the board. Mm. Because later in the season, when you don't have belief, you need to go back to those moments where you're like, hey, man, I was already winning and I accelerated. Remember when we crushed those fools? Yeah. Let's because, get back to that. Because, because you don't, you know, because it's kind of come a time where you're just losing all the time. Yeah. You know, and, and that's what I'm scared of. I, I don't know that I'm scared of it. I'm preparing for it. I know it's coming. What do you do when you feel like you're, you've, you've had a tough year or you, you backtracked or an event didn't go the yeah. way you wanted and now you're just pissed and you're like, dude freaking I'm, I'm ready i don't know for me it gets me mad and i'm like all right it's time yeah that ain't happening again yeah what do you do well i mean that's why that's how i feel in real estate yeah all the time because real estate's a loser's game right it's 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 i lose 99 out of 100 times you're talking about making offers and yeah everything yeah. yeah at least 99 yeah but one one winner crushes mm -hmm. if i did it right yeah you know but even when i went i might have to walk away from the deal we just had a deal in chicago it was 150 million dollars I, I was still in the deal yeah and i walked away over four million bucks why because i know i did the right thing because long term it was going to be a recurring problem it was a glass problem in the building it keeps fragmenting it's a chinese product mm. probably got some wuhan in it <laughs> and, and, uh, but it keeps cracking like, like 10 or 15% of the building keeps having this fragmentation in the in glass. And I, I think it's a recurring problem over and over that $4 million doesn't fix because next year I'll have to do it again. And then again, and it's going to keep hitting the NOI. So I walked away from the deal. I was stealing the deal, stealing it, absolutely stealing. Mm. But I, I didn't, but it was just discipline, dude. Discipline comes in the form of showing up and discipline also comes in the form of say, don't do that. Don't do that deal. Yeah. Don't take that money. Right. So like there's, you know, there's that combo, right? Yeah. And so, um, but now I didn't get a score that I could have had. I had an easy score in my hand. Mm. I had it, but I'm like, that's discipline too. Yeah. Because if I can avoid the losses, you know, you don't want to get a, you don't want to get a win. that's just temporary. You're a believer like what Warren Buffett says. Like, it's more about avoiding the losses. Than, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 And my reputational, like I'm watching syndicators. I know what's happening with a bunch of those syndicators right now. Right. You know, it ain't, it's not a pretty thing. Yeah. And we're not, I'm not having that problem. Yeah. So that, 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 by the way, tells a great story. Yeah. Like there's a big long-term story that comes with that. Yeah. So, but you know, 
you got to be the guy, bro, to showing up every day, even when you don't want to. And the richer you get, the less you're going to want to show up, mm. you know, and the more you get victories, the less connected you're going to be to the sales team. Cause the more, the more intolerant you're going to come become of the bullshit. Mm. And the more you're going to be like, I don't want to hear your bullshit. Get on the phone. Mm. And then at some point you're going to be like, I can't talk to these people like this. <laughs> it's just, it's not good for anyone. No, it's not good for anyone. <laughs> you don't feel good about it, you know? Yeah. And then, and then you bring it home with you and then it starts affecting the kids and the marriage and everything else. <laughs> just let the rest you know? of them deal with it. But, let Jared deal with know, it. All these guys, all these guys I talk to, they, they, they have the same similar experience. They do. Of intolerating, you know, mediocrity. Like I go in the bathroom yeah. and I see, I see tissues on the floor. Yeah. I'm like, you guys can't pick that shit up. Like, how can you not pick that up? I can pick it up. I see it's on the floor. How do you not see it's on the floor? You know, there's water all over the sink. You guys don't see this? Like these, these, <laughs> these things will keep you broke. Yeah. I know we're coming up on time, but I'll, I'll add to this. Like, dude, all those things. You see, you yeah. see the same stuff because yeah. of who you are, bro. But you know, what's crazy is you're paying attention to the pitch, man. But what's crazy, what's crazy about it is, you know, typically when you're like a visionary, big thinker type person, people think you can't pay attention to details because you know, you're just thinking so big, right? You're not naturally like wanting to do these little detailed tasks, but it's weird because I see all those same things you're talking about where I'm like, it, it, it'll be something so small. What's a big it, deal, man? Yeah. Like, uh, but, but it is a big deal. They don't think, but it's like, it's not even there. Yeah. 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 You know, you're like, yeah. why is this like this? This yeah. makes no sense that yeah, this is yeah. still here. Yeah. This is here yesterday. Yeah. Why is this still here? Yeah. And it's, it, you know, people just don't think it matters. Yeah. And then what I'll do, and I know you're coming up, but I'll do, I'll be like, who did that in our company? I'm like, there's a mistake in the landing page. Who did that? The marketing team did it. Dude, I'm the same way. Every what, what are you talking about the matters. marketing team? The marketing team is not a person. No, no mother has ever late called their kid the marketing team. Okay. <laughs> who did it? Yeah. Uh, everybody gets like this. They get this look in their face. Who did it? Like, and then I'll be like, who? Who's the person? I don't know, man. Find out who did this. Okay. Uh, I'll check later. No, who did it? I want to know right now who did that mistake. And they're like, what's the big deal, bro? Bro, who did it? Sarah. Okay, good. Sarah. That ain't the way to do it. Yeah. But it wasn't the marketing team. Yeah, there was a person. And it shouldn't be acceptable. And you got to correct it now because if I wait, like she's not a puppy. You know, the puppy piece, it's too late to reprimand. Right. You got to get the puppy before it pees outside. Mm. So he knows where to pee. Sarah just needs to be corrected in the moment. Yeah. Or you lose the opportunity. You lose the opportunity. Cause what am I going to do? Tell her two days from now. It's already done. Cause she's going to be like, wasn't a big deal. Mm. I mean, we all lived for two days. Yeah. So, you know, and you're still paying that much dude, attention to detail. I am a micro manager control freak and I am proud of it. And I, and I highly recommend it for everyone that wants to create freedom for themselves mm. because, because then, because if you don't pay attention, why would you expect anybody else to? Mm. And, and we, you know, this psychiatric influence we have in our society today, let it be since the Beatles made that famous, let it be. Yeah. I can't let it be, bro. Yeah. I'm not, an, I'm not, I'm not the Beatles. I'm not John Lennon. You know, I'm not Paul McCarthy. I, I'm not, I'm not that guy. I need to make sure I guarantee you Elon doesn't let it be. Oh, I would love to see the behind the scenes of how he's guarantee doing you. anything. I mean, you know who he is, bro. He walks in Twitter and cuts 75% of the staff. That's an animal. Yeah. In a good way. Yeah. And that's what people should be more like, not less like this woke, love everybody, give them another chance. It's fine. It's not fine. And, and, and the more people that stand up starts right now, like right now we're bombing Iran and, and, uh, uh, Syria and, and, um, Iraq, mm -hmm. but we're, but we don't do anything about the people that live in this country Yeah, and, and the drug dealers. Why don't we bomb them? <laughs> mm. All the illegal immigrants. Like I, I like that Biden finally attacked back over there, but bro, how about attacking the bullshit going on right here in this country? Mm. Like let's nuke everybody. It's every illegal immigrant in this country. You, you want it, You want a headliner? You want a big clickbait? Yeah, the last big, second of the video. Every 
illegal immigrant in this country, you violate one crime, bang, you're back. You're, you're being sent back, deported immediately. Yeah. Why don't we strike back here at home, right? Because if you do, people will straighten up their bullshit. Well, people will make excuses. Well, they got a family here. Okay. You, sh- you knew that. Yeah. So what, what are we trying to do with Iran right now or Iraq or Syria? We're trying to say, don't stop, stop it. You can't be strong there and be weak here. Mm. You can't be strong at home and be, then be weak at the, at the office, mm. you know, because otherwise it confuses. They're like, okay, who is the guy? Is the guy bipolar? Yeah. You got to be consistent. You, the executive have yeah. the biggest job of anybody. You get the biggest payoff, mm-hmm. but you got to be the biggest player on the team. You never, you never step back and just, you know, you, you just got to enjoy it while you build it. That's, that's really you what it comes You got to enjoy the frustration while you build it. <laughs> hope, hope that it's going to be worth it. And, and probably when you get to, you know, when you're, when you're later in your years, you're going to be like, dude, I should have just let it be. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I, I'll tell you in 10 years. I'll, I'll you let know? you know. Yeah. That's great. Well, dude, I appreciate you, man. Always I good always to be do. with you, man. Yeah. It's always great. I always learn more about myself talking to you actually really yeah all right yeah which is cool well i'm just trying to learn selfishly the things i need yeah. to know so yeah. i appreciate yeah, it are. and uh yeah guys go to 10x growth con uh you don't even know who's speaking but <laughs> it'll be great you'll be there at, we in, tell in people, Miami. Look, if you come there you travel down there and you're unhappy okay i will give you your travel your your flight back whoa all good with me wow if you're unhappy in the first three hours if i don't over if i don't put the freak on you mm. in the first three hours. You just grab one of my guys and say, Hey man, I want my, my, tr- my round trip travel. I'll take care of you. Not a problem. Mm. I don't even want you in the room. Yeah. All right. But you got to go. Yo, yeah. 100. Yeah. I don't want you in the room. If you didn't appreciate what I just dropped on you. Yeah. Cause I know what it takes to do that. Yeah. And like, like last thing, you know? Yeah. I'll talk with you all day. Yeah. I, I, I figure you got to go. A guy told me once he's like, Hey man, the tickets are 25 grand. That's insane. I'm like, bruh. I paid 10 million for the tickets <laughs> and spent one year like this room ain't empty. Yeah. 10 million on just that event. Not even counting the staff. Uh, yeah, yeah. All this stuff. By the way, the guy do. sitting next to you is important. Yeah. The people behind you are important. Person to the left of you, the guy in front of you, like you don't want to be in a room by yourself. Right. And you don't want to be in a bad room. Mm-hmm. So stop the madness. Yeah. Like you're lucky to be here. You'll yeah. never shake it. You'll, you could get rid of chlamydia either easier than you could get rid of a 10X growth conference. <laughs> you can still remember where you sat, dude. Yeah, I do. I remember it. Right? Vividly. And you're like, dude, what's going on in this place? <laughs> that, that's what we wanted to do. Yeah. We wanted to create that effect on you. Yeah. And I'll tell you, the effect it had on me was that I remember, whether this was your intended effect or not, I remember by the end of it, I sat there as a young entrepreneur who was like, all right, I don't even know what's going on in this space. Like I'm a a real estate guy who's just flipping houses. I was like, you know what? I could do this one day. That was the effect it had. I was like, all these guys are just normal everyday dudes. None of them are special. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, I came from the world of sports where no, you actually do got to be legitimately special. Yeah. You got to be born. Got to be fast. You got to be big. You got to look a certain way. Yeah. Like, Dude, you you have a chance or you don't. Yeah, yeah. And then I looked at all these business guys and Dude, I'm like, these guys anybody are Anybody can business. be a successful business person. Yeah. And that's what I came away with. I was like, yeah. oh, this is going to be way easier than sports. That's how I looked at it. Yeah. And longer. Way longer. And pay better. And pay better. <laughs> I was like, all right, I'm in the right spot. Yeah, I'm and in you the don't right get spot. traded. You can't get traded. You trade people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're the yeah. owner now. Yeah. You going to own a team one day? No. Yeah, you, you don't even really like sports. No, I do, dude. I love baseball. That's okay. my, my, my favorite. But you don't want a baseball team. I mean, yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't, it's not on my battle plan. I had Tony Robbins on and he was just talking yeah. about how all these guys are buying teams yeah. now and how he's got ownership in like five teams now uh-huh. through these funds and stuff. Yeah. But you don't want to do that. You know, I, I'm going to keep doing what I've been doing. Yeah. I'm going to keep banging out that that real estate is going to be so unbelievable the next this year and through next year. Yeah. And we're going to bang out. We're going to do something big with 10 XL system. That'll be a multi-billion dollar company. Do you think that's going to be your most valuable thing? No, it's going to be a big thing, mm. you know? So, 
Uh, we're gonna we're gonna drop something in the investing space this year. It's gonna be massive. Mm. So we we'll just keep building this 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 portal of businesses, you know, that you never imagined. Yeah, it just and putting the brand on the marketing, get the operations right, and get these things rocking. You know, yeah, we're gonna do something big in HVAC. Yeah, I saw you had an HVAC conference. Yeah, yeah, yep. that's awesome. So in the education, probably we'll probably at some point do less in education. Definitely less in events. We might be down to our last one or two 10X growth conferences. No way. And not do them again. No, I don't believe it. Okay. Well, you did tell me before the show that you're thinking about yes. going quality over quantity yeah, yeah. in life now. Yeah, we, I, we, you know, I, I, I got to figure out, you know, I want to become something different now. It's transition time for Grant. He's got to grow. He's going to shed the old skin, you know. And becomes another version of myself. Mm. You will, you'll, you'll, you'll shed many times. Yeah. Or, or you'll die. Mm. Which is shedding anyway. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> well, dude, thanks for having me. I man. appreciate you, bro. Yeah, always good. Yep. Guys, make sure you subscribe to the next one and we'll catch you then. Peace. I have access to the most successful investors in the history of the world, quite literally. I got obsessed with knowing what is the pathway? What are the asset allocations for the most successful financial investors in the world? How do I take the least amount of risk for the most amount of possible upside? If